Hi, this is Brandon Moon with Moonlit Fly Fishing. I want to welcome you to fly tying night tonight. Today we're going to tie up another Guides Hair's Ears, Guides Choice Hair's Ears Soft Hackle. This one's going to be an unweighted version and is an amazing fly to fish on a swing. Um, very, very, very effective. Also very effective fished as a dropper off of the Guides Choice Hair's Ear Soft Tackle that we tied last week. This one you're going to tie off, I tied off the hook eye of that jig. So this one's going to be off at a secondary um, zone in the feeding zone for the fish. And I can tie them in different colors or I can tie them in the same colors to match. So just a very, very effective fly very easy quick to tie so before we get started though I want to invite you to make sure you like your favorite video make sure you leave us a comment say hi ask us a question we love answering questions and helping people understand some things they are they're not understanding about the flies we're tying or a technique that we're using we want to help make sure that everybody's getting the most out of our videos um, also make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell to receive future notifications as we tie more videos and do more videos in the future. So for this pattern today we're going to be tying it on the ML053. This is a 2x strong, 1x short. So this is a heavier gauged um, wire so it's going to be a little heavier than like a dry fly but not so heavy so it's going to help get it down in that surface column a little bit better than a traditional dry fly okay so we're gonna go ahead and get started today and get our hook in the vise okay we're using Semperfly's classic wax 12 aught this is the floral green okay we've got it on a stone faux elite disc drag bobbin. This is our favorite bobbin to use. These handles make it extremely comfortable to tie with. <clears throat> the tension control gives us great control of our thread as we're wrapping and that's why it's become our favorite bobbin to tie with. So we're just going to wrap this thread back to the bend of the hook this one's on a size 14. You can tie this smaller or larger if you'd like. Okay, so for the tail on this, I'm using a hen saddle, and you can see I've kind of prepped this feather already. But I'm just going to take these fibers here, they're kind of like marabou, chick boo there, and I'm just going to take a small little clump of that okay so you can see that little clump I'm gonna measure that out I want it to be roughly about the length of the hook shank now I'm just gonna secure that in I always wrap up to that point again just so that I keep a nice even base as best I can. I'm going to be going over it with <clears throat> dubbing so it'll kind of blend itself better that way. But I'm going to put two wraps there behind that tail to make sure that tail remains standing up nice and good. And you can see that tail's got great flow to it just kind of like using some hair's ear wood or something like that very very good material for that also makes it so that we can utilize more material on that feather so I'm just going to be using the Semperfly flat tinsel in green for this pattern where I'm tying it in green last week we tied it in black and red I want to show some color versatility there's purples there's um, browns, there's the black, natural, all kinds of green shades like 
so many different color options I love it okay we're gonna come back here now we're gonna put in our dubbing before I do that I'm gonna put a little bit of um, wonder wax okay I like to use the wonder wax for our dubbing we're gonna be using Vicuna dubbing again this time I'm using the olive done color use whatever color you want I have a small pinch and I'm just gonna do a couple different small pinches at a time so I can make a really good dubbing rope and this dubbing rope I want to be about I don't know inch and a half to two inches long it's going to vary depending on the size of the hook and you can see those fibers are real buggy I'm going to give the first two wraps or three wraps with now I'm just going to use my rotary I don't have my clip on this one to take and clip that and I have to get my clip put on this vise so we're just gonna wrap that up here I'll go backwards just a little bit and then back forward that's just going to give me a little bit of a taper to this. Now I'll half hitch this. Now we'll take that tinsel and we'll wrap that tinsel and create our ribbing on this fly. I use the tinsel, it's got a little more reflective qualities than a wire does. So I wanted to use the tinsel on this pattern. Now we're just going to take And secure that tinsel down okay you can see I've still got fibers coming out of there it's nice and buggy <clears throat> okay now I'm just gonna create a little bit of a thread base I've got a few fibers in there I'm gonna kind of comb them backwards a little bit. You can take a dubbing brush there and pull those out. I I don't do that myself but feel free to do that if you'd like. Now I'm just going to take my feather and create my little tie-in point here. Now I'm going to tie that in. Two wraps over the top. Pull that tie-in point back two wraps there now I'm just gonna take and trim that out I'm trimming down that longer hackle stem I don't need the hackle stem to be quite that long okay now I'm just gonna set my thread off to the side so that I've got good area to work with and keep my wraps nice and clean I'll use my tie flies hackle plier. This is my favorite hackle plier to use. They call them hackle tweezers actually. I like them because they grip better than other hackle pliers and they're lighter so I have less breakage when I'm using this. So I'm just going to wrap this and I'm going to palmer each wrap rearward with my fingers and with the stem 
as I'm wrapping this. Okay, and this is going to give me a good clean wrap where I took and thinned out my hackle stem so one side of the hackle stem was bare. I do about five or six wraps. I don't really count them as much as I eyeball what looks good to me. I prefer a little bit heavier hackled fly which I know is a no-no. So now I'm just gonna go in front take that off. I'll pull that back a little bit and clean up that head really good. Now I can take and cut this hackle stem out. I just try and make sure I don't clip my fibers. Now I'm just going to kind of create a little bit of a head there before I whip finish. I'll do I usually do a three turn whip so we'll do one, two, and three. Okay, now I'm going to take my Solares thin hard. I'm going to put a little bit on my bodkin here. This gives me a little bit more control over my application. Now I'm just going to take that and apply that over that thread. This is going to make this hot spot head even a little bit more visible. Okay, going to really glow. You'll see in just a second when I cure this up. So I'll just cure that up there now. You can see how that just glows. And we've got some good glow reflection here in the body as well. So, okay, and there you have it. We have kind of an olive colored hair's ear soft hackle. The hackle for this is a grizzly dyed dark olive. I really like this. The hair's ear soft hackle traditionally uses partridge. You could use Brahma instead of partridge. I like the hen saddle a little bit better myself. And there you go. Make sure you like your favorite video make sure you leave us a comment ask us a question if you have a question for sure and subscribe hit the bell to receive future notifications and we look forward to seeing you again next week and you guys have a wonderful week